Hi, I'm Martin. This is Martin's Motors, and this is the McLaren 720S. Let's take a little walk around, have a little look at some of the features, quirks, just the beauty, the design, the overview of the car, and uh, I'll talk you through some of the things that I've learned since having it. I've had it about a week now, and some of the features that I didn't know, some of the ones that you hear online that tell you what it does and doesn't do, and then try and give you some ideas of what I find with it and uh, what's good, what's bad and you can give some feedback and hopefully you can answer some questions so overview of the car just take a walk around and have a look it's just stunning it's got carbon ceramic brakes got the yellow brake calipers on this one a black forged wheel uh, low profiles 20 inch wheels on the back 19 inch wheels on the front can see the aero set up at the moment that normally sits down so you have to set that internally push a button and pick it to be aero active or, or non so again we'll go through that later twin exhaust outlets carbon kit on this so i believe it's got carbon pack one two and three there's some carbon that it doesn't have so the tail there's some bits you can add on internally uh, on the door at the part so um, we'll have a look at what we have on this one first and then give you some ideas to open the door on the McLaren 720S, yes. just going to put your hand just inside there, just to the left of this little bog section. Tap it, it lifts the door, and then you can pull the door up from there. Move that out of the way. And as you can see on this one, we've got yellow trim with Alcantara. And again a carbon pack so the door this doesn't have the carbon pack on that section of the door and i think there's some other bits you can get it does have it on there uh, and it's got the, the yellow stitching and color coded internal parts as well so again some air intakes into the back because the engine's in the back of this one it's a rear or mid or rear mounted engine just inside there you've got a data plate on there that says 720s and it's a four litre twin turbo V8. So it's quite an engine. And then around the front, it's got soft close. So these doors, both doors, both sides have soft close. So put it down and then just tap it and it closes in tight. You don't need to slam it. Carbon features on the wing mirrors. And then under here, you've got the little camera for the bird's eye view. So when you put the car into reverse, so there's one here, there's a camera on the front, there's a camera on the other wing mirror, and then there's one on the back. And it gives you a perspective of the car as though you're looking down on it. Of course, you're not looking down on it because the picture of the car in the screen is actually just an image of the vehicle. So, and then it just shows you the all around perspective. The rear, the reversing camera then comes up on the main screen. I think there's an element in there where you can change the features on it to show you a different view, whether it comes up on the main screen or on the back. I can look into that. So this has got more carbon all around here. You can put your hand right around and through. Um, you know, there's a little, I think that must be a wash button behind it. So that's how you give these a blast of water. Indicators uh, and daylight running lights. You've got McLaren detail on there. And then you've got your main lights under there. Indicator on the side as well. I can show you that by locking and unlocking. So if I lock the car, it's up there. I unlock the car, and she goes, and that brings the daylight running lights on. And if you notice the mirrors as well on this, it's got a, it's a feature in the menu. You can fold in the mirrors when you lock. This is the key, so that shows the key. So you've got the lock, unlock, and then it's the front boot, fruit kind of thing. Push and hold. That comes up, you just lift it up. There's no unlocking mechanism under there like on some other cars and in here just a second oh, that's me if I unlock it as well so this is the McLaren handbook that comes with it there's a bit of information on here about the seats which I'll run you through later because I've seen a few things online where they say how difficult the seats are to work they're actually extremely easy it's just you need to know what buttons you're pushing where they are and which ones are which so there's uh, two four six buttons will move the seat up and down forward and backward and then it also does the back section as well and then you've got a lumbar support so very easy to use you just need to know what you're pushing because it does seem complicated compared to others sorry just unlock that right. there we go open the 
door and I'll put this back in. If you ever want to take a little look inside before I come in from that side. So we've got the inside, you've got a little tab here to pull, which I believe is if the car's in an accident and you need to release the, the door because it won't open because of the way the mechanism is. I think that helps you release that little triangle warning. There's a lift up tab here, so you can take the seatbelt off there. Lift up tab, pulls the seat forward. You've got a lovely seat and then it's got a parcel shelf in the rear, which again, I haven't gonna show you that. There's a parcel shelf there and it's got a little hole down there's another storage part there with some more current booklet information. This one, if you take a look down here, is a 720S launch edition. So, I don't know how many they made, but regardless, it's a stunning car. Pull the seat back, push the button back on there, and then your seatbelt's there, ready for your shoulder when you get in. And also, under here, so on the driver's side door, You've got a button to disable the internal sensors if you lock the car and you've got someone in there, a person, a pet, whatever you want to do. And then that stops the alarm going off. That one then is if you need to be towed, you push that button and then it disables the alarm sensor and allows it to be locked. I would guess. I haven't done it. I haven't had to do it. Don't want to do it. So you never know. So as you get in, just got a step, twist and fall, almost, into the car, put on the brake. And then on the dash, there's a start stop button. You push, hold it, and fires up. And the dash comes to life, brings up the screen, the screen on the sat nav side, gives you all the information there. Uh, parking brake is applied, sorry for that radio. Parking brake is applied, which is this one here. You've got your day, your lights, for your standard, I leave it in automatic. You can put it into one and two, which I'm guessing is the side lights and the main lights. So if you just want to override that. Then on here, I'll take my glasses off while I'm inside the car. We've got the Bowers and Wilkins radio upgrade or the sound system upgrade on this. A uh, little bit of yellow touch throughout stitching again. There goes the earnings. I can turn the engine off while we talk through it. Um, that's to open up the front bonnet. That's to lock the car, that then enables, disables the, the dashboard there. That goes down into like a sports mode. They say it's to clear the screen for you to have a better sight, but the way that I've got my steering wheel, as I sit now, if I put it up or down, so if I put it back up, there she goes. It doesn't make a bit of difference to me. I can still see exactly the same, but I suppose it just gives you a different, if you sat lower in it or, uh, if this steering wheel is up, because on this one it's electric steering wheel, so you can move move it out over there, move it up, no, it's up all the way, move it down. So I guess there, if you were driving and the steering wheel was in that kind of a position, then you push it, yes it will, it'll clear a little bit of a difference there, but you know, I'm not a racing driver and I just don't know about that, so I just leave it in that position, I like it there, and then all the way in. I like and then up that gives me about the best view of everything I want and you can set this as part of your memory pack on the car so down on this side again if you could take a little look inside here you've got some buttons it's the same on the passenger seat you've got M for memory one and two so if you want to store your seat in a particular position for your driving so I can move the seat again as I said earlier quite simply I want to take it forward there's a button right at the front Push that, or can we turn the car on? So it's turning it on without the engine. To turn it on without the engine, you just push the button and don't have your foot on the brake, and then that won't start the car up. In here is a little pouch. This is what I was told the other day by a gentleman in McLaren, John, very helpful guy in the service centre. Um, if you put the key in there, that's about the best position for the key because it picks up all of the signal to start the car because there's people do put the key actually in here if everyone goes there and from what they're telling me is that's not necessarily the best position to have it that is the best one because that's where they'll pick it up better so that's a bit of advice i was told um so again with the seat if you've got a button at the front moves it forward button at the back on the bottom moves it backwards then you've got in between that there's two buttons one takes it down and one lifts it up 
again, push it down and up. And then the very back, which is for your, your rear section of the seat, you've got a button that takes it back and a button that brings it forward. And that's it. It's not difficult at all. I don't know why people are going on and saying, oh, you don't know what you're doing. You're pushing the seat, you're pushing the buttons. It doesn't move, it goes the wrong way. Just look at the book or look, there's something online that'll show you this picture. The picture is really good. We'll show you later. And essentially it's got the seat and then, so you've got the back there, two buttons. You've got the bottom, two buttons, up and down. You've got one back there, one back there. Very easy, simple to use. So, if I turn it back on, the screen should then come back into life. It keeps shutting down. I think it's a battery storage element that the car does. Uh, so the screen comes on, same here. And then, so if I just close the door, I just grab the handle. It's quite a strong door. So you pull it down, and then when it gets to the last bit, that's when it does the soft close. If I just do that now, pull it down. And then lift the button inside and up it goes. If wants okay, to... so we're back in the car. I'm going to start it up. It'll be a bit quieter because the windows are closed and the doors are shut. So foot on the brake, push the button. Oh. <laughs> oh, wait there. It's me. There we are. I didn't have my foot on the brake enough. Again, that's one of the little quirks with it. Although you put your foot on the brake, it's quite a tough brake. So you have to push down. I think there must be a sensor on there that feels that the brake is made. So push it down enough, then the car will sense it. So we're in now. We've got the paddles that are actually fixed to the steering wheel, which I like personally. Again, I'm not a racing driver, but uh, each to their own. You've got a stick here that moves forward, back, up and down. And what that does is controls that screen, if you can look at that. So if I push it away from myself, get it onto the screen, it gives you a bit of information about the car. Move it down. Let's put some aircon on a second. So to put the aircon on, so just to go to that one, push that button. If you wanted to do a quick cool, push quick cool. And then it gets really cold, really high speed. And I've got to say, everything I found with is exceptionally good. You've got your heated seat button there. One, two, and off. One, two, and off. Again, I've heard, so we need to turn that back off quick call. Take it off auto. Drop it down. Okay, so if I lower that down a little bit, there. It's synchronized, as you can see, sync. So they both do it. If you take it off sync, I push that one, put it to whatever I want, and then it leaves them separate. So I like sync, and it synchronizes to the driver's one. It's only a two-seater, you're not a million miles away from each other, so it just makes it easier. This is the bit that people talk about, just got a racing helmet on, this is a little quirk on the car, which is nice. Quick heat, again, if you want to heat it up fast, uh, if it's cold. And then you've got the other buttons, so these buttons then take you to main menus, and so that one's for your radio, that's like a quick push to the radio. That's for your sat-nav, or to your just general navigation, shows on the screen. If you want to zoom in and out, you can do that. If you want to pinch the screen, or you can. I think there was another. Oh, wait a I've gone off it. Okay. Um, then the phone, if you want to go to the phone, uh, we're not using that at the moment. That's just a mute, mute button there. If you want to put it onto your phone and play some Bluetooth music. So again, via your phone, there we are. Michael Kiwanuka, album Kiwanuka. It's very good. I like it myself. Uh, then fan back to the aircon. And then on here, this is the bit that you've got the other buttons that we had the tail lifted in the back. This is what allows you to do it. So if I drove off now, the tail would drop back down and it would just look covered. Whereas if I push the active, that then changes to whatever you've got on your screen. So then that allows you to go into, I think it's comfort. Uh, it is comfort, it says up on there. And that's the P is for performance. So if you look at that, when I turn it, Evan, on there, I turn that, it actually tells you that it's, oh, sorry, powertrain. So, powertrain it's in sport oh it's in track goodbye screen you can bring it back up push the button it brings it back up for you so you can have it whichever way you want and then it shows you a bit more information if you're in track so the same there if you put the handle in so that's your suspension and uh, makes it a stiffer ride sport into track mode again so then that just changes some of the setup of the car I just like getting for now because I've only had it a week comfort and comfort Sometimes I put the powertrain at sport, just for more responsive, but, uh, and then this button for manual, 
that's what allows you to change gears manually so it's up and down on the sticks uh, on the paddles or just leave it in that for automatic and again on the screen it shows you if you switch between them it goes M for manual A for auto quite simple ESC off I'm not going to push that I'm not going to do that aero that's the one that brings the tail up and then when you brake hard it brings it up like an air brake and then that adds to the uh, braking assistance of the vehicle then you've got your automatic on off so if you want to do that you can override it so that the car doesn't keep cutting out when you get to lights if you're in comfort if you're in sport it doesn't do it anyway that i found uh, tell me if it's any different and i would guess the same with track so if you're in either of those it won't make a difference because it's not going to cut the engine off whereas if you're in that one that's the only time you would do it to then stop the engine cutting out all right i just leave it as it is let it do what it wants to do start stop button it's very nice that's your kind of main menu button and then push it again evan was the last person i called so it brings that up on the screen and then that gives you further information you can go into your media okay uh, push that again twice navigation radio phone so this is the track telemetry variable drift control rear view camera so that's the one we were talking about you can just put it on the screen so that's just us looking back close that back to that it keeps bringing brings you back to that menu i think there must be an option on here that changes your main home view i just haven't looked into that yet so i'm sure it's there drive if you want to so d is for drive n is for neutral r is for reverse then you've got your hazard warning so if you just push that on and flashes the indicators then you've got launch for launch control we're not going to do that then in there like i said uh, i don't know what it's meant for but as i say that they're telling me it's not necessarily for the key you've got a drink cup holder there you've got a little storage unit in there which has got two usbs and a jack for a standard i think it's a 3.5 jack outlet so if you want to plug it into your phone if you don't have bluetooth or something you can connect your music that way under here there's a 12 volt little socket there as there is also one in the front and there's a drink holder cup holder there and a little bit of storage so pretty practical uh, on the driver's door i've got a little storage which you can put your phone or your wallet or other bits and bobs in there which is great and it does actually open now i saw something that said if you open the door it won't let you open that uh, on this one at least that's not the case you can still open it you can see there so i don't know uh, this is the upgraded speakers part of the car and then you've got your so your door open there's a button there uh, a latch whatever you want to call it. just lift it up and it pops up and you push it up with your arm up it opens and out you get you come back in same thing close the door and then soft close you've got your windows push all the way down to fully open it and then if you just want to do it manually just don't go to the click go to the click it does it automatically for you down here you've got a little toggle switch there for your mirrors so if you want to adjust your mirrors if i go to the left hand one which is evan's side if you look at the mirror I can then move it down, move it up, and obviously left, and right, and the like. You just get that in your position, comfortable for you. So I'll just put it back into zero, and then that's the, the mode it stays in. I've got my foot on the brake at the moment. Um, any other elements? Oh yeah, so within here, that track pack, if you can see behind us, it's got a little camera, and then that's what records the information on the track pack. I think it uses that camera, I believe it uses some other ones i haven't done it yet i haven't got to do that so it'll um store all the information and then you can play it back it allows you to store it if we go into here look track telemetry uh it gives you a disclaimer which you accept and then phone disconnected so it disconnects your phone i think it then uses the memory storage that you would put into one of the usbs and then you can do different comparisons put in the driver's name for instance there um uh, back off there so it does that it's a funny one um back to the phone there's a button up there for settings and then that's where you can slide up and down you can open your garage door with this track telemetry navigation lighting so you can change your interior lighting on this i think so there we are pick the color so i like it blue you're not really going to see it in 
this kind of a light, just more night time you'll see that. So uh, if you do that, put it on full or low. There we are, go all the way up. And then job done, it's kept right there. And you can change other entry lights, how long they stay on for, um, that kind of thing. So that's your front screen. There it goes. Turn that off. That's your rear one, which is just the electric one. So again, if it's frosty, clear your rear view. Oh, off on, off on. And then back to navigation, because that's what I tend to drive with it in. And then that's what I was looking for. So that plus minus button. So there, instead of using your fingers, that allows you to then do that and move in and out. If you want to go into navigation, uh, I think you just go into yeah, push and hold. And uh, close that gone I'm still learning the car so I'll get better back onto the, the main screen then on your display up here this is where you go through that menu so you can move down and you see it'll bring down information so the next one as I move it down will be vehicle status so and then the phone will come down next yeah and then Bluetooth audio navigation so on so you just in and out and if you want to go into that sub menu into that menu so go there go back pull it back towards me and then takes you in you can set the tires oil or have a look at battery servicing so I go servicing select this tells me the service is due on this car in 75 days so uh, when it goes into McLaren they can service it and sort it out and bring it back all fresh and ready and then that'll reset the timer for however long it needs from there push it away from you to cancel it and then battery oil tires messages there should be no messages there we are, no messages. Push it away, push it away, back to your main screen, and then down you come. Okay, so that's the navigation. The other side then, to lift the car up and down in this is very easy. So, if you can see that button, if I push that in, it gives you ride height normal, move stalk up to raise. So if you lift it up, it starts to raise the vehicle, which I can feel it doing now. So, then if I push it down, it so you can only annoy the neighbors to 4,000 revs driving off you can annoy them to much much more like 7,000 okay I'm just gonna take it for a little drive now so importantly seatbelt first because the car doesn't like you to pull off if not then as you stand now I'm in neutral automatic you can do it one of two ways if you want to just go into drive with the paddles pull a paddle it'll go into first gear if I push that button down there for neutral it goes back into neutral same thing if you want to go into first gear on the stalk here just push the drive and then it puts it into first so you can do it either way whether you want to pull off using the paddles or you want to pull off using the button but either way it'll let you do it but you do need a seatbelt on because it doesn't like pulling off without the seatbelt on so
So again, looking at the car, one thing you may have noticed outside our office, we've got a couple of charging points. So these are four uh, other vehicles we have, which I'll run you through another time. One of them is a Cayenne plug-in hybrid. The other one we've just ordered, we're waiting for, and since the pandemic, it's not coming anytime soon. Uh, we ordered it with Porsche Center Cardiff, is a Taycan. Uh, Turbo S. So as soon as I get that, I'll be able to take you a run around that car, give you some information, show you how it drives, so you charge in times on a uh, normal plug-in more charger. I say normal. This is a three-phase 32 amp, so it's quite a good charger. Charges the Cayenne in about one hour, uh, and I'm believing it's going to do the Taycan in about four hours. But we'll see. And that's from zero. This one is a 32 amp single phase, so it takes a lot more time. It's a number of hours instead of uh, you know, just adding. Okay, so we're in the car now, uh, getting ready to start it up. Seatbelt on, foot on the brake, push the button. There it goes, fires up, screen comes to life. You can now move the wheel, but you couldn't before that because it's just too hard. And then, so as you said, you can either push that to go into drive, and currently we're just in normal mode, so whatever the car decides, push that to drive goes into first automatic look all around and drive off so off we go and if you look behind us Evan the tail is actually down as you can see so if I push if we keep it there I push the active button and the arrow and then you see it lift up so then up it comes so as you drive along this estate it's a 30 mile an hour estate so we'll keep it at 30 and just taking over nearly one and a half thousand revs in fifth gear but really smooth such a lovely smooth car and the wheel is gorgeous the steering wheel on this is just the right position obviously because you can move it <laughs> for one and then the other one is the size of it the grip is quite a, a narrow but deep steering wheel so it's really nice and see we've got the paddles so as we are now in active if I push it into manual and then I can just put it down the gears back up and this is a you can move it either way you've probably seen a few videos on this so if you want to change up on your downside push it away and if you want to change down on your upside push it away and then otherwise it's just up and down as you would well there's a guy with a pallet on the back of his beetle there we go so coming down this road and then we'll just have a little look around the car so look through the mirrors see the perspective just Active, so it's in normal mode now. So as we stop, ah, didn't do it. Made it in a minute. Maybe it's just been sat. Okay, so it does do the start stop. So uh, we'll give it time. We have a gentleman in front of us. Carefully over there. So we're going in automatic now. Just changing itself, and then. Very smooth. It's a really smooth driving car. Nothing more than that to say, really. Very comfortable. The seats are nice. I took it out on a, a business trip the other day because of our work. We're working for some companies that are dealing with elements linked to COVID-19. And when I was driving up there in the car, I saw my client uh, on a job we're finishing, which is helping them provide for the supply chain. And it was great, no problem at all. Very, very easy to drive, good motorway car. It's got cruise control, so it goes the windows. So that button that we did for the lift up and down is also the cruise control button. So that allows you to, what do I know? If I set it, there we are. My feet off the pedals, cruising at 39. I lift it up once, it goes up one mile an hour. Lift it down individually. really easy and then for the cancel cruise control a little bit bumpy road i find that with some of the bumpy roads it is a little bit more so, so not as soft as sometimes you're hearing about them people are comparing them to uh, luxury cars and i don't find them that good in that it's very good but it certainly isn't driving a, a saloon so when we do a little run in the uh, panamera we got a panamera gts that we'll be doing a video on as well and that car 
it's very smooth in smooth mode and then sports mode you can change the height and everything else so we'll show you the difference there but if we just take this onto a carriageway now we'll go onto a dual carriageway where you can go up to 70 mile an hour and we'll do a little bit of an acceleration on it and see how that goes okay just about to come onto a nice carriageway Tesco, 99 octane fuel, lovely, will be the best for this baby, hopefully it's the best, it says it's a high number, who knows, okay so I'm going to show you the lifting when you move it, so you push the button up on the screen, it gives you the option, right height, and then I'll push it up to raise it, and then it's raising, but I think what happens when you turn it, it stops raising, I think it only likes to do it when it's going straight, so the art straight ahead required, they said. Yeah, right height raised. So that's it raised. And then when we go down the road, down towards the drive. So we'll show you the Cayenne, which we'll do a video on later. Which is there. And then we've got Mini, which we could also do a video on. keys back out and then this will all turn off as you open the door it's gone that will go then when we close it Let's close the car down and you see that screen go and we lock it up there we go. and then the screen goes down so this is it parked up looking gorgeous Open the boot. 